Congratulations, Ransom Pirates. What a great victory on Friday. Loved watching you guys play. Loved watching you guys compete. So let's uh, string another one together uh, this Friday. Hey, before we get into this week's uh, character coaching session on intensity, let's check out this week's Kingdom Sports Minute from Coach Ron Brown, assistant football coach at the University of Nebraska, glorifying Christ with effort. One of the greatest plays I've ever seen in pro football happened to be in a Super Bowl game, the Buffalo Bills versus the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, we know that the Bills had lost like four Super Bowls in a row. And in one of those games, uh, it looked like, an, again, another loss. They were way behind with just a few minutes left in the game. Wide receiver Don Beebe for the Buffalo Bills was way downfield when Jim Kelly, the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, was sacked and the ball was picked up by a Dallas Cowboy defensive lineman named Leon Lett. He started to run to the end zone for yet another Dallas Cowboy score. Uh, it was no doubt that the Buffalo Bills were gonna lose this game, but Don Beebe was like a streak of lightning, sprinting many yards to finally catch Leon Lett when it seemed like everybody else on his team had just kind of gone through the motions on that play. Beebe tackled Lett before he got to the end zone, forcing him to fumble. Well, it had nothing to do with the outcome of the game. The Cowboys still beat the Bills. But BB got hundreds and hundreds of letters from people wanting to know why he was willing with just a couple of minutes left in the game to go so hard. And he said it was because of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't matter what the circumstances were. He was going to glorify Christ with his effort. Is that you? Is that me? have a problem at five and a half minutes after liftoff, Jack Swaggart, Fred Hayes, and James Lovell felt a little vibration. Then the center engine of the S2 stage shut down two minutes early. This caused the remaining four engines to burn 34 seconds longer than planned, and the SI-4B third stage had to burn nine seconds longer to put Apollo 13 in orbit. At 55 hours, 46 minutes, as the crew finished a 49 minute TV broadcast showing how comfortably they lived and worked in weightlessness, Lovell said, this is the crew of Apollo 13, wishing everybody there a nice evening and we're just about ready to close our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening in Odyssey. Good night. Nine minutes later, oxygen tank number two blew up, causing the number one tank to also fall. The command module's normal supply of electricity, light, and water was lost, and they were about 200,000 miles from Earth. The message came in the form of a sharp bang and a vibration at 9.08 p.m., April 13th. Swaggart saw a warning light that accompanied the bang and said, Houston, we have a problem here. Lovell came on and told the ground that it was a main B bus undervolt. Next, the warning lights indicated the loss of two or three fuel cells which were the spacecraft's prime source of electricity. With warning lights blinking, one oxygen tank appeared to be completely empty and there was indications that the oxygen in the second tank was rapidly depleting. 13 minutes after the explosion, Lovell happened to look out the left-hand window and saw the final evidence pointing toward potential catastrophe. We are venting something out into the, into the space, he reported to Houston. Capcom Jack Lausma replied, Roger, we copy you venting. Lovell said, it's a gas of some sort. It was oxygen, gas escaping at a high rate from the second and last oxygen tank. The trip was marked by discomfort beyond the lack of food and water. Sleep was almost impossible because of the cold. When the electrical systems were turned off, the spacecraft lost an important source of heat. The temperature dropped to 38 degrees Fahrenheit and condensation formed on all the walls. The most remarkable achievement of the mission control was quickly developing procedures for powering up the CM after its long, cold sleep. Flight controllers wrote the documents for this innovation in three days, instead of the usual three months. The command module was cold and clammy at the start of a power-up. The walls, ceiling, floor, wire harness, and panels were all covered with droplets of water. It was suspected conditions were the same behind the panels. The chances of short circuits caused apprehension, but thanks to the safeguards built into the command module after the disastrous Apollo 1 fire in January of 1967, no arcing took place. Lovell recalled the descent to Earth. The droplets furnished one sensation as we decelerated into the atmosphere. It rained inside the CM. 
Four hours before landing, the crew shed the service module. Mission Control had insisted on retaining it until then everyone feared what the cold of space might do to the unsheltered CM heat shield. Photos of the service module showed one whole panel missing and wreckage hanging out. It was a mess as it drifted away. Three hours later, the crew left the lunar module, Aquarius, and then splashed down gently in the Pacific Ocean near Samoa. Unbelievable story about Apollo 13 and how these crew members survived this intense moment. And for me, intensity can and will keep us focused. Intensity can and will bring us together. Intensity can and will help us do the impossible. And intensity can and will keep us humble. These astronauts had to decide to embrace these four things that I just shared with you. At times, intensity can cause us to lose focus on what our real goal is. And so for us to really lean into that opportunity, seize that opportunity and be the best we can in a focused situation. Also, tragedy, intensity can draw us apart or can bring us together. Let's use the intense moments to bring us together to, to do the next thing, which is accomplishing great things. Sometimes we accomplish things we never thought we would by an intense moment giving us that opportunity. And lastly, we always have to stay humble. We've always got to stay hungry, stay in the fight, get back to the basics and do the things that you know will get you where you need to be. Branson Pirates, your mission awaits you against Carthage on Friday. Are you willing to focus? Are you willing to come together? Are you willing to beat the odds and stay humble and hungry? Guys, good luck Friday, and I hope to see you guys really soon.